My name is Scott McLeod. I'm the Associate Priest at St. George's Anglican Church in St. Catharines, Ontario, which is part of the Anglican Diocese of Niagara and part of the Anglican Church of Canada. There have been those conversations that have happened already uh, whereby people are asking the question, is this, is this a plague from God? Cash will soon start to flow to those who need it. The feds are merging two previously announced benefits to create the Canada Emergency Response Benefit, which will give payments of up to $2,000 a month for the next four months to those who have lost jobs, lost income, or are forced to miss work due to isolation or taking care of a loved one. The benefits are backdated to March 15th, and if you're already receiving employment insurance, you don't need to apply. An online portal for application should be open by April 6th, and the Prime Minister says they're working hard to make sure money arrives within 10 days. In order to speed things up, we're rapidly deploying workers from different departments to deal with claims. I actually saw a video on Facebook last night with a doctor talking, and I tried to share it to four people, and the video vanished. Like, right after I shared it, it didn't even say... This content is not available. It said, it didn't say anything, it was vanished. There was a doctor somewhere in the States trying to say that this didn't, uh, it doesn't have the major effect that people are thinking. He found information saying that there was a, a patent taken out uh, on the name coronavirus in the United States in 2016, four years ago. And uh, after the patent was filed, there was a a drug company that was one of the top 10 drug companies in the United States that also uh, filed for a patent for a coronavirus vaccine. So the prediction this guy was making was that this vaccine is going to come out and before they let every kid go back to school, they're going to mandatorily make everybody get the vaccine. So we'll see. This guy was claiming that it's actually uh, only a 2% death rate and that um, compared to other viruses, it was very easy to kill. 80, 80 degree temperature was able to kill the virus so um, I know that's mixed reports from the fevers that people are reporting having but uh, it's interesting that the, that the video completely vanished so I didn't know that Facebook actually could and obviously they can if they want completely make something vanish as if it were never even posted. We'll check in with our friend Sean later in Toronto and we'll see how he's handling it right now. Our friend Sean is staying in a hotel because he has several roommates and uh, he doesn't want to be around uh, a lot of people right now one or two of our roommates of his roommates brought in boyfriends that were from out of the country just before they shut the borders down so now they've got uh, two people from Australia living there illegally uh, who wanted to be here before they closed the borders so he didn't want to be around for that so he checked into a hotel in downtown Toronto, so we'll, we'll be down there and we'll be able to see what uh, uh, what Toronto looks like uh, when when things are closed, which has never happened in our lifetimes. We're able to deliver those programs because so many of us are, are in uh, lockdown ourselves. The journeys are also recommending loan guarantees to make sure that charitable organizations have easy access to urgent, substantial short-term loans. Yeah, they, they posted stuff, so even in the elevator, it's like you have to be like two meters apart, so uh, no tickets on any of those cars. Uh, so obviously they're not enforcing uh, tickets right now. Um, well, I, I, not true, actually. I saw someone get a ticket. It's, uh, definitely, it's definitely reduced, right? I think so. I guess with like, okay, this person might not have been on delivery, so that could be a, a different thing. Um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of deliveries going on, for sure. Um, there's literally nobody in this, this hotel right now. No filming? Okay, sorry, thank you. Sorry, Sean. Hey, Anthony, uh, Brian Elwood here. I'm from Mount Pearl, Newfoundland. I live in Bangkok, Thailand. Uh, what I think of COVID-19, man, I don't know. I think Mother Nature has sent us to our room to think about our bad behavior for a while. And uh, hopefully we come out of this with a new perspective. And... Um, that's all I can really say about that. Uh, it's impacted me. I mean, I'm a comedian. All my gigs and tours have been canceled. I was supposed to do a tour of the Middle East, Saudi Arabia, Oman, Bahrain, Qatar. And I was supposed to do shows, uh, you know, in Singapore, South Korea. I was supposed to do a tour of the U.S. this summer. That's all been canceled. Um, actually, I was supposed to release my first comedy album that is ready to go. I've been talking to some buyers, and that's been put on hold. 
uh, which is very frustrating. Um, not sure what to do with that now, depending on how long this is going to go on. You know, do I release it independently? Do I wait? So I'm talking to people trying to find out about that. Uh, but, you know, I mean, ultimately I'm blessed. I mean, um, you know, people have it much worse. We just got to hang in there, you know, stay inside, save lives, all that. I'm here in Bangkok with my wife, Holly. She's a teacher. Uh, she's from Mount Pearl as well. All her courses have been moved online. We're in day 11 of isolation here. Uh, so we're doing our part. Uh, things are pretty crazy, man. Uh, I mean, I got family back home. I got my mother and my two brothers uh, live in um, Newfoundland. Uh, you know, they're isolating as well. Uh, one of my brothers is a truck driver, so he's out and about a little bit, uh, but he's doing all the safety measures. My sister is actually uh, a nurse at Baylor University Medical Center in Dallas. She's on the front line, so she's pretty much a superhero. I've been in constant contact with her and, uh, you know, just keeping up to date on everything. So day-to-day -day life in the church has drastically changed. We have suspended all public worship, uh, our pastoral care visits. So that's going to visit people at home, uh, going to visit people in hospitals, in long-term care facilities. Uh, that has all uh, been suspended as well. Uh, we are working with the local health authorities and with uh, the hospitals to organize to have one person who is a representative from our faith community to be the on-call person. And that doesn't mean from St. George's, that means from all of the Anglican churches in uh, the greater St. Catharines and Niagara area. Uh, so just one of us, uh, one clergy person who can go in and, and likewise for other, other faith groups. And so that's, that's a work in progress as well. So in a time where we need to be aware of, um, keeping people safe and healthy, uh, part of our role in that is being responsible and not traveling all over the place and, and potentially spreading the virus. So... Our pastoral visits uh, are now relying heavily on uh, telephone. Uh, we've been making use of video conferencing uh, services, and um, we've been also live streaming our worship. So recognizing that we can't gather publicly and that we can't, unless there's a very good reason to, um, meet one-on-one, -on -one, uh, then we are trying to use um, digital technologies uh, computer and video conferencing uh, technologies, as well as just the, the telephone system uh, to connect with people. And only at uh, end of life care, uh, not just related to COVID-19, of course, but if somebody's in hospice or somebody's in a hospital dying from another cause, uh, then um, we would be able to seek to offer them end of life care. Well, uh, I think we've been expecting a pandemic for some time. Um, and this is just my personal opinion. It doesn't reflect anyone I know or my workplace or anything like that. But just personally, I know we've been hearing about a pandemic from certain sources for a while. There are sources around that, you know, choose to either minimize or downplay or deny any kind of global threat. And we could all sort of surmise who those would be but I won't get into detail there I would just say that if you're a reasonably intelligent person you could have anticipated a global pandemic even if you think about it in a less um, sort of um, knowledge-based way and look back in history um, you know there was the Spanish flu there's um, been SARS so it's not a big surprise that a health giant health issue would impact the world at some point so I think that this while scary overwhelming and um, daunting it could be it could have been expected i would say so in the local community um yeah we see a variety of different uh impacts and responses um certainly with small business owners um having to close their shops for now or figure out ways of uh, continuing to pro provide services but in drastically different ways um and, and I mean, everybody's scrambling. And uh, so I, 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 I don't know what's going to happen in the, the longer term, but I, I see a lot of changes and I, I am certainly concerned for especially small business owners and how it will impact them in the longer term. Um, because St. George's is in the downtown community, 
um, yeah, I'm, I'm really worried about uh, the, 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 the people, um, you know, particularly the uh, restaurants and cafes and um, uh, those kinds of businesses which are directly impacted by the need to limit uh, public gatherings. And one, um, one of our own parishioners, uh, her spouse runs a cafe and they are moving everything to a takeout model and they're very concerned for what their future holds um uh, but i mean the 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 effects are are uh, you know more or less happening right now and and i hope that they're not going to get worse and uh um i i i suspect that we will see some challenges uh, uh increase and so some situations will get worse but hopefully through both community response and, and through the, the support from our government, um, we will be able to support each other through this. Um, I know that uh, other local outreach agencies are also really grappling with how they continue to serve their clients and serve uh, the vulnerable in our community. And as the financial impacts, especially in the next few weeks, uh, continue to, to mount, I wonder and I suspect if we will see a great rise in the need um, of people accessing those those services. And I'm, I'm thinking of people who have been laid off um, out of necessity by, by small and large business owners. Um, yeah, I think there's, there's a lot of concern. There's a lot of anxiety right now. And um, so I'm, I'm hoping as well that the, the church is able to provide space and and provide um, support for people to talk about and and engage with those those fears and anxieties and that we can also encourage that um, kind and compassionate response from people in our community and uh, and 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 to really show the support that is going to be needed for getting through this for for all of us what's important. I joined to make my community stronger. To make a difference. Still mild and pleasant out there. Overnight tonight we'll see some fog patches develop and that could linger into early Thursday. A tomorrow not a right off day but unsettled just in the afternoon for a few hours. Keep the umbrella handy if you do have to head out. It's one person on this train. Monica Chong. I live in Mexico City. I'm a psychoanalyst. It's not something that is easy to deal with, given that it's unknown for most people exactly what's going on, what happened, and why some people are more uh, proclive to get infected than others. So this creates um, anxiety. Uh, this, this creates uh, emotional things that are difficult to deal with and as put us in an isolation which is not easy either what i think of covid19 is that as any other thing in the world it's a challenge but also an opportunity uh, an opportunity to be more conscious of our health of our world and what we're doing for both of those things uh, of course, COVID-19 has changed my day-to-day -day life. Given that I am a psychoanalyst, I'm not able to give face-to-face -face sessions. So uh, I've privileged online, which is not the same to be, to be honest. Uh, connected with transference and the link is not the very same as being at my office and communicating uh, is different but it's also better than being alone and without any kind of help. 
what I think is that I have to adapt and I have to be responsible. Responsibility is to be at my office if it, if it is necessary, if I think somebody's having, an, for example, an anxiety uh, period that is uncontrollable, I must be there. But if we can do it online, we'll do it online. So it has changed a lot, my way of working, my way, it, ha it has also changed my way of eating. It has changed that I, I am not able of going to the gym and I have my kids every, uh, I mean, every day here having classes online and um, it's also worrying me. It's also worrying me because it's not, I mean, it's affecting not only health, public health, it's it's affecting incomes, it's affecting uh, minds, it's affecting souls, it's affecting a lot of things, being isolated, but it's also to me a uh, way to show that you care and you love. Uh, you know, all, all our usual um, adult and uh, children education programs and social gatherings have all been suspended until further notice. Um, and at St. George's specifically, we do have a breakfast program that runs daily that provides a, a free uh, breakfast to anybody who needs it. And so largely the people accessing that program are people who are, are homeless uh, or, or impoverished. And that's been a real struggle. We've been trying to figure out how to keep the doors open. We've been working with the public health authorities to try to figure that out. And just in the, the last 24 hours, um, our... Uh, uh, our leaders, um, so the, the the rector, the priest in charge, and uh, the the people who work with the rector to make the the decisions. Uh, in the Anglican Church, we call those the the wardens, and they make up the legal corporation. They have come to the very difficult decision that we are moving to a takeout model for our breakfast program. So. <laughs> So like I was saying, Anthony, here in Thailand, uh, it's been a state of emergency as of today. Uh, I mean, thousands, tens of thousands of people have lost their jobs here in Bangkok, and there's a mass exodus out of the city. So that's a dangerous time right now, obviously, considering the virus. Uh, it looks like there's going to be curfews implemented. They're going to restrict your movements. Even they're going to watch social media. I mean, this is a military dictatorship after all. They're going to make sure people aren't posting vicious or um, untrue things online, which I think right now is just whatever. We need to get inside and do our part to save lives, you know. What do I think about the government's response to COVID-19? I think ultimately it was pretty good, you know. Um, I wish they would have talked about the Canadian expat community more that live overseas. I mean, there's a lot of us, we're not vacationing. We live overseas permanently and we're not coming home anytime soon. We can't just pack up and come home. But uh, the safest place for me to be right now is here. And like I said, it's day 11 of um, isolation. So the uh, safest place for me to be is here. I'm hoping to get home this summer. Uh, we'll see. Um, how am I dealing with it? Um, I've had great support from my employer in the sense that I am now working from home. I was one of the last people in the office, partly by choice, partly by necessity, but I felt supported through that process. Um, I'll keep the employer name out of it, but I have no issues on that front. No issues with my kids being understanding of it. Um, everybody feels it sucks in a sense. We're a social family. Um, I would qual qualify myself as a, um, a very end of the spectrum extrovert, although everyone needs downtime, but I would say that social interaction is a big deal to me and my children as well. So we are struggling a bit with that, but technology really helps. And then I'll say that we have a moderate uh, to mild sense of concern about getting it but at the same time perhaps more bravado than is warranted about just trying to keep healthy and be positive about not succumbing to it in a major way if we do get it. Um, we were all really quite ill around Christmas time with some sort of a flu and 
just in a lay person sense, not spreading misinformation, but I'm not sure that they pinpointed exactly when COVID started, um, definitely in 2019. So I have a sneaking suspicion with no proof that we may have actually had it around Christmas. Um, but of course we weren't tested back then. We felt really quite ill and the symptoms um, were uncannily similar to what you're seeing now with these. Of course, we weren't hospitalized. Of course, it would have had to probably have been a, called a mild to moderate form, but definitely we were pretty sick for quite a few days and it felt different than any other flu or cold we'd ever had. So, um, you know, that's not provable. And, you know, if it's not pertinent, certainly um, doesn't need to be shared widely. But I did see anecdotally people wondering the same thing when they got sick last fall. We have a, a youth outreach program that has started the STEP program. And we've come to the difficult decision as well within the last 24 hours that starting Monday, that program will now be by appointment only. Um, we were hoping to keep it to 10 people or less uh, being able to access the program so that it was a, uh, a safe place for them to be. I mean, we're talking about at-risk youth um, who have insecure housing and who are facing um, potential uh, addiction and other uh, challenges, mental health or physical health challenges, uh, to keep the STEP Center open, to keep that as a safe place for them. But um, we've decided that with the, the daily developments and watching things happen, that we've had to move to a, uh, an appointment-only model starting next week. So it's, it's had significant impact on uh, the day-to-day -day life of the, of the church. Um, but we are trying to meet people where they are and to continue to provide assistance. me and my family and my routines just in this thing that I have to remain <laughs> in at home as much as I can uh, but it hasn't really changed a lot I mean to be honest it's just uh, it has been a good opportunity of getting to know each other a little bit uh, it has changed my way of contacting with my patients, uh, but also it has given me the opportunity of knowing that the link <laughs> is already solid and I can be there for them. It doesn't matter if it is um, through a distance or through the technology. The important is that the link is there. Um, the community response. So I do live in a condo complex and I feel like we were a good condo complex, but we had our issues like any gathering of people in a certain confined space would ever be. And I feel like everyone's risen to the occasion. I won't say where we live for privacy, but I will say that um, in my Toronto neighborhood and my tiny little condo community, not so tiny, but small enough. Um, people have really rallied. I myself brought neighbors toilet paper. I had neighbors offering to chat with me on phone calls or PMs or um, one of my neighbors is sending me an exercise video by email from my son because he likes to work out and he of course can't go to any gyms. Our condo gym has been closed. Um, rightly so. I'm on board with all the measures. Um, the hardest measure I struggled with was when Pearl Jam had to cancel their tour, which was starting in Toronto, and it was such an honor to have that, to be honest, that I was really devastated. But understandable, they had to operate with an abundance of caution, to use Heather Reisman's phrase, and uh, I, I applaud it now. I think at the time I was quite upset and I probably am a little ashamed of how I thought it was an overreaction but it certainly wasn't. We're trying to compile a, um, a, a, a list of volunteers from the church who are going to be able to go and help do some uh, um, shopping, uh, pick up the necessary basics for anybody in the congregation who, who might need it. Uh, who is not able to get out either because they're immunocompromised, because they're mobility compromised, um, people that might need that extra bit of help who maybe don't have local family 
or friends who can help them out. So we're trying to help coordinate people and also keep all of those people safe and healthy as well. So, um, yeah, our day-to-day -day life in the church has been significantly impacted. Um, and just like everybody else, we're trying to figure that out. I think this is an opportunity to be closer to my family, definitely. Uh, and to get to know each other and to learn to respect each other, our times that we want to be together, the times we need for privacy. Uh, we've been able to read more and write more. Uh, we've been able to, why not relax? That it was something that every day you didn't do as often as you would like to because uh, life is demanding. So, uh, yes, uh, I think this has, this has been an opportunity to get closer to my family, uh, not to my friends. I don't know about, I mean, I haven't seen them, of course, because we're in our houses, but it's good to know that uh, they're okay and I find out that they're okay through social media. So I'm thankful that uh, these devices are helping us to get closer. Um, I just want, I was, I was just thinking that I would like to add that we should see this um, as an opportunity for considering being more than human beings, being humans, for caring for each other, for trying to make this world a united world. To consider that we're only one race and we're all in danger and we're all uh, together living in the same house. We should take care of it. We should take care of our Mother Earth. We should take care of our health. We should know that there's somebody else out there thinking of us with love. Uh, I think it is a part of ourselves that take is that must take this seriously not only this but this is an opportunity to try to create a cleaner world a more conscious world to avoid these viruses or pandemia to continue uh, spreading all over the world i think it is a time for us to reflect uh, uh, to reflect our our light our true souls uh, to stop privileging money over health or human beings. I think it is time for reconciliation. I think it is time for self-consciousness. Um, that's what I want to say. You can give love by, keep the, by keeping distance. This is the best way I think we're going to fight and win this absurd war, absurd war that uh, we've, 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 we've gotten into and caring, caring and loving is what is needed now. Thank you. I've been traveling the world for over 20 years now, uh, but you know, I've been in contact with people more than ever right now. So it's been kind of nice. I mean, every night uh, my wife and I are videoed with family and friends from all over the world. And it's been nice. We are coming closer, I think. And uh, I think people are having a different you know, perspective on things. And um, I think people needed a shake, you know, uh, obviously we're not, uh, we're not doing things right. And I think this is an awakening, not an apocalypse. So uh, we're going to be all right. We're going to get through this. And uh, in terms of anything I'd like to add is nothing, man, just simply stay inside, save lives. It seems that simple thing people can't understand. Uh, it's not about you, you know, it's about others. So I mean, try to consider other people during this. So again, stay inside, save lives. Thanks, Anthony. All the best, buddy. But I must also say that I don't agree well, with the way my government is taking things. To my impression is that they're not taking it as seriously as they must. I must say, and I won't regret saying this, that I don't think that my, the president of uh, Mexico is being professional. I don't think he's been sensible or sensitive. I don't think he's been logical. Uh, sometimes I think 
to my opinion, is that he mocks of a situation that we are living. Uh, I would like him to take more effective policies such as closing the borders, um, such as prohibiting gatherings of uh, people, taking care of public transportation. I mean, I think he's not taking this as seriously as it is. And I hope that uh, society takes it in their hands and uh, we do what we feel we must do because we're not stupid. And if the president or the government are not doing what is necessary, that we do it. So I'm appealing to all my country fellows to do so. Um, and the whole world, by the way. Um, I'm bothered by the blame placed on countries like Italy. Italy did try to warn us and they have a very large population in a very small space of geography. People forget this. They have an aging population. So a number of factors put them at higher risk. So I find that it's um, disappointing when people point fingers um, and start saying they're a gregarious culture and it's because they're so loving and running around hugging each other that they spread it. Well, be that as it may, um, is that really what we are? Is that really what we want to be as society? Um, pointing fingers at people who've experienced such a massive um, shock and crisis from something? No. So I, I would like that um, talk and, and negative negativity to go away, let's say. Um, how has my government responded? I mean, I, I'm all, I always have a healthy criticism for any government and that, you know, I'm a voter and I want to see that they do what's best for society at large. I will say that, um, our prime minister has been, um, more than adequate in communicating. I think his messaging has been on point. I like the health Canada minister, Patty Hajdu. I think she's done a good job. This is not necessarily an endorsement for them per se. Like I don't, want to get into that because how we vote is private but um overall I'm, I'm not surprised our government has done a decent job i was actually moderately pleasantly surprised by our provincial government um with uh, doug ford there as a premier he seems to be following the line of other politicians and not uh, really going off script so i i think i'm pleasantly surprised i do think more needs to be done for social distancing. I don't like the phrase, to be honest. It, it It's actually a bad phrase. I would say physical distancing because people need socialization, even just like videos like this, or I do um, some FaceTime, uh, or sorry, some Facebook Live for friends and family to keep in touch. So physical distancing is key, and whether the Emergencies Act, which I think it used to be known as a War Measures Act, should be invoked, I mean, that remains to be seen. The streets are empty. People are working from home a lot. So hopefully it's starting to kick in. Uh, how has my family and routines been impacted by this? So thankfully my spouse is able to work from home for the time being. Uh, she's in constant contact with her office to, to figure out how that's going to work and what that is going to entail. Um, we have a, we have a son and this is March break. So he was supposed to be at a March break camp. Of course that was canceled. We've been trying to be really honest with him and, um, open trying to make sure that he knows what's going on and trying to make sure that he understands what's going on. Um, and certainly all of our routines are affected. Um, our normal slate of activities, you know, music lessons and, and sports and uh, fitness activities are all curtailed. We have a, a dog, so we're walking the dog daily um, and trying to do things at home. Um, and next week, we will see what happens, uh, especially with the provincial government announcing um, online resources to help uh, uh, continue curriculum at home. We'll certainly seek to be following that up and, and making sure that we're doing our best to, to ensure that our, our son is, uh, accessing, 
um, the uh, education resources that he needs to continue learning. Yes, fewer people are in, on streets, but not as necessary. Uh, I also understand that we, uh, I'm in a country that is overpopulated, at least my city. Uh, I understand that people need to go out. Not everybody can stay at home, not getting an income. They need to survive, they need to provide. Uh, I understand that. So what, I th what I've seen to be honest, is that not many people are taking this as seriously as they, as they should be taking it. I still see some people, actually, for example, uh, having food on trucks on the street, which is, to me, very irresponsible. Uh, uh, around the corner, there's a build, they're, they're building, uh, there's a building construction. They haven't stopped. They continue working. So, it makes me think that for some people, not the workers, but the entrepreneurs, the owners of uh, companies, or some other, how I don't want to say it in any political, uh, I mean, I want to say it politically correct, but the owners of the money are taking more care of their money than public health. Uh, so that makes me mad. Um, but this is really, really critical. I mean, I'm not a doctor, but I did once want to be, so I'll say I take more than a keen interest in this virus and disease, I guess. And it, uh, the vectors, I heard one story again, don't quote me, but a Korean man, South Korean man went to a hotel and then went to a buffet um, and then a religious event and spread it to countless people. So that scares me and I would never want to be unwittingly or wittingly responsible for someone's sickness or death. So I think we have to keep that in mind. I perhaps have not been scanning all of uh, the government responses from around the world to make a comparison, but so far I felt pretty good about the government responses, uh, both locally, provincially, and uh, nationally. Um, I, I'm not expecting it to be perfect. Um, and certainly, I, I do see them learning from the examples and, and the missteps of some of the other governments around the world, and, and not in a, a criticizing, critical kind of way, but having seen those mistakes and heeding the calls from those other governments to not make the same mistakes they did, um, I, I see the, the government's response here as, as good. Um, you know, certainly in the longer term, uh, we'll, we'll see how they do. I hope that uh, the level of support uh, and, and the, the commitment to the people that they have uh, espoused so far continues. I see no reason why it wouldn't. Um, certainly there's going to be a growing number of people who are really struggling with this, but hopefully it's something that the government can respond to and hopefully we don't see the health system being overwhelmed and and see how that affects everything else so um, certainly so far I, I, I I'm taking uh, heart in in the response and the fact that they are seeking to address the needs of the people um, my fear of course is for people who will fall through the cracks and I, I think of the people who access um, our uh, breakfast program and the, the, the youth that access the STEP program. And so I, I hope and pray for continued 
um, and, and an upscale of response to uh, particularly vulnerable segments uh, of our population. Um, so far, so good, and we'll, we'll see what happens next. If we bring something from the supermarket, I disinfect it before it gets into my house. Um, what I'm doing is to keep distance. I don't shake hands. I don't give kisses. Uh, because I think this is time for me to show my love in distance so I can come closer later with the people I love and I care and I care for everybody I mean as a human being no I mean I'm just trying to do my best like everybody we're all just human and I hope that my perspectives and thoughts provided you with just another person getting through the day in an unprecedented situation um, uh, helps, helps others and just helps to hear my story. Thanks, Anthony. Have a good day. I don't know. It's day 19. I think I'm going to start putting out some comedy content, give people some tension release. I did a rant uh, the other day about it and it, uh, it hit pretty hard. So any, anything I can do to help people, you know, relieve a bit of stress and relieve a bit of tension, I mean, I guess that's what I do. So I'm going to start releasing some comedy content online. I mean, it is what I do. I just felt weird uh, thinking about myself during a time like this. But here we are at day 11. This might be for a while. So uh, I think I'm supposed to do my job and make people laugh just in a different medium. I hope that we all learn from this, um, that hopefully our hearts grow and that hopefully we listen to each other, um, that we are able to offer that calm, loving, kind, and compassionate word, uh, because I, I think it is going to get worse before it gets better. And so as it gets worse, we need to step up. Uh, we need to be able to offer more to each other, not less. And um, yeah, that, that in the struggles that people will be facing, that we are able to offer more, um, a little bit of grace and a little bit of love, a little bit of compassion goes a long way to helping all of us get through this. So I hope and pray for peace for all of us. And so I pray peace be with you. This is a plague that God has sent to test us and that rather the real test, especially for people who have faith, is to see God in the midst of this. So not seeing that this is coming from God, but to see, but to see God at work in the midst of this. And so I believe it was actually Mr. Rogers who had said that in a time of crisis, you look for the people that are helping. You look for the helpers. And so my, my firm belief from the things that I've been taught from my teachers and professors and, and those who have been my mentors and offered me guidance over the years is you see God at work in the people that are putting their best foot forward. You see God at work in the people that are trying to help as many people as possible. COVID-19 is certainly a, uh, um, a disaster that none of us have experienced the like before, uh, but hopefully it's one that we as a human species will rise to the challenge of.